Hi, I'm Anthony Echo, and if you have nothing better to do with your life, you may know me as a frequent contributor to the Rabbit Holes film review series in the fold. You are watching Best of Fest, our new series where we discuss film festivals and our picks for the best festival entries. Our crew had the pleasure of attending the 2018 New York City Documentary Festival, and we want to talk to you about some of the documentaries that are heading your way. The festival's closing feature was The Orange Years, chronicling the creation and evolution of children's television network Nickelodeon, from its humble beginnings in public access to the entertainment giant it is today. The movie is a real nostalgia trip, especially if you grew up on Nickelodeon the way I did. I think the signature thing that I gained from this documentary uh, was learning about Geraldine Laybourne. Geraldine Laybourne was a network manager who came to Nickelodeon in 1980, and it's under her direction and under her vision that the network became what it is today. Having grown up on Nickelodeon my entire life and being fairly informed about the inner workings of television, uh, that was a real great surprise, was to find out who was behind this channel. Laybourne's mission was to create children's programming that didn't condescend to its audience, that engaged them on their level. It was under Laybourne's leadership that Nickelodeon became a home for unique and irreverent content. Even though that was a fun revelation, it's not enough to, to satisfy an hour and a half documentary. In fact, it's surprisingly light on conflict. The film isn't so much a dramatic story as it is a loose archiving of footage from Nickelodeon's golden years, designed explicitly to mainline nostalgia into the veins of early millennials. Lord knows that when we were watching it, the audience was made up primarily of early to, to late millennials, so they were the, exactly the kind of audience that would be receptive to this kind of thing, and, and you know, there was lots of cheers and lots of applause. It's, uh, you know, to put it crudely, a real suck job. There's no real story. It's just kind of, uh, hey, remember this. And that has a certain historical value. Uh, and Lord knows it was fun enough as somebody who grew up on Nickelodeon to see all this stuff again. It's just really just kind of an extended commercial for something that no longer exists. In fact, there's, there's parts of the movie where there are genuine problems and genuine conflict. Uh, Geraldine Laybourne uh, left Nickelodeon for Disney and the studio would later succumb to corporate interests. And the movie just glosses over it uh, just so that you don't, so that the nostalgia trip isn't disrupted. And I think it's, to the, it's not to the movie's benefit. In the Q&A following the premiere, directors Scott Barber and Adam Sweeney report that the project was a labor of love. And ironically, this could be the film's signature flaw. A palpable phobia of judgment permeates the film. In spite of my complaints about the movie, uh, I definitely recommend it. Uh, especially if, if you grew up on Nickelodeon, uh, this is something that'll definitely hit you right in the nostalgia bone. It was a lot of fun to watch. Um, but if you're looking for any kind of overarching narrative, you're going to be disappointed. The Orange Years is a love letter to the glory days of Nickelodeon, and while its reverential nature seeks to distract from a lack of story, it is a must-watch for anyone who grew up with it. We could fail and do a crummy show, but we couldn't not take a risk. So there's all those crazy things that happen that, you know, nobody knows about. Thanks for watching Best of Fest on Rabbit Hole TV. I'm Anthony Echo. Be sure to subscribe because we have more reviews from Doc NYC coming your way.